Okay, hello and welcome to the next video, which is paper three of the November 18 series that we're going to go through. Again, I'm delighted to be joined with Abdallah. Um, welcome, Abdallah. Uh, hi guys, so my name is Abdallah Wahishi and some of you might recognise me from my YouTube channel Abdallah Maths Tutoring 2021. Um, I'm a recently qualified maths teacher for secondary and primary. Um, I currently make videos for Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3, GCC and A-level maths. Um, if you found this video useful, then i really appreciate it if you could drop the video a like, um, press the bell icon so you don't miss out on further videos, and most importantly, um, subscribe to the channel and help me grow my YouTube channel, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to get straight started then with um, question number one, okay, of the November 2018 paper three. This is the last paper of them all. Hopefully you're enjoying these series and you're working through them and then um, using our videos to be able to go through your answers. So we're going to start off with question number one, hand it over to Abdallah. Okay, question number one, guys. It says, add eight millimetres to seven centimetres. Circle your answer. Well, we, well, first, you've got two different measurements here. So what we're going to do is convert millimetres to centimetres. Okay, so millimetres to centimetres, guys. I'm going to divide by 10. Okay, so millimetres to centimetres, dividing by 10. And then going vice versa, centimetres to millimetres, I can times by 10. Okay, for my answer there so eight divided by 10 guys okay so eight divided by 10 is 0 0.8 guys so the answer is going to be 0 0.8 what i'm now going to do is add 0 0.8 to seven centimeters so it's 0 0.8 centimeters now guys so 0 0.8 so putting my numbers in the correct place value add seven because seven is my unit so adding this guys okay eight plus nothing is going to be eight Zero plus seven is seven. So my answer is 7.8 uh, centimeters, guys. So I'm going to circle option three. Okay, question number two, guys. In a pie chart, one sector represents a quarter of the data. What angle is that sector? Well, a full circle, guys. So a full circle is 360 degrees. So therefore, a quarter of 360 is going to be 360 divided by four, okay, which gives us an answer of 90. So a quarter of 360 is the same as dividing it by four. So a quarter of 360, half it and then half it again. Half of 360 is 180 and then half of 180 is 90. So I'm going to circle option number four. So question number three, it says, which of these cannot be the number of lines of symmetry of a triangle? So your answer. Well, first of all, I've got zero, one, two, and three. So looking at each of these, then what I can actually do is I can actually have a zero lines of symmetry of a triangle because I can have a scaling triangle that has all different sides, uh, length sides. Okay, so this can have a scalar has a scalar um, has zero lines of symmetry. So I know I can do zero lines of symmetry. So I know that that can be one of them. So it cannot. It, it's not going to be zero. One. Well, if I do an isosceles triangle, which is like that, uh, okay, with these two the same, okay, um, I can do a line down the middle and I get exactly the same size, so it can't be one. Two, I can't really think about, but three, okay, equilateral triangles have three, so an equilateral, okay, has three because if I had an equilateral triangle like this, uh, okay, and um, I could do a line down here, like I, like I did with my um, isosceles triangle, and then I could do a line like this through to there, okay, and then I could also do another line from this here to there, okay, so I could actually convert that into three different um, triangles, okay, and have three lines of symmetry, okay, so I could have three lines of symmetry there, so I know it can't be three, so that just leaves me with two, and actually I can't create a triangle with two lines of symmetry, okay, so that is question number three, guys. Question number four, so circle the fraction equal to 0 0.12, now this is a calculator paper, so getting my calculator out, what I can do is I can input um, the answer, so 0 0.12, Oh, sorry, start again, guys. Sorry. So 0 
two, I can then press the equal sign and the answer is going to give me is three out of 25. So straight away, what I can do is circle the second option. So 0 0.112 is equivalent, okay, to three out of 25, guys. Right, guys, question number 5a, solve n plus 7 equals 103. So solving this equation, guys, so getting n on uh, uh, on its own so the opposite of adding seven is to subtract seven so i'm going to subtract seven on both sides of my equation to balance each side so i'm going to get plus seven minus seven goes to zero so i'm going to get n equals 103 take away seven which is 96 guys okay so 103 take away three is 100 and then take away four is going to be 96 so the answer is going to be 96, guys. So the answer for that question is 96. The part B, guys, solve M over 6 equals 12. So M divided by 6 equals 12. The opposite of division is the times. So times in both sides by 6, okay, because that's the opposite of dividing by 6. M is equal to 12 times 6. Okay, so working this out, guys. Okay, so 10 times 6 is 60. So 10 times 6 is 60, 2 times 6 is 12, 60 add 12, we're going to get a 72, guys, so adding my answers, okay, so it's a plus there, I'm going to get 72, so M equals 72 for question 5B, guys. Okay, thank you, so question number 6 then, okay, is looking at, here's a plan of a flat with four rectangular rooms on the grid on the opposite page make an accurate scale drawing of the plan label each room use a scale of one centimeter that represents two feet so first what i'm going to do is i'm just going to work out with this scale drawing here with my scale of one centimeter which represents two feet of what i'd actually do here so if i've got eight feet and actually two feet represents one so how many two go into eight well that is four times so we know that actually four centimeters represents eight feet so what we need to do there is just work out each centimetre first of all, because I'm going to be doing it in centimetres, I'm going to be saying that each square here is a centimetre. So 12 feet, okay, well obviously if 12 feet, okay, I'm just going to divide by 2, that's equal to 6 centimetres, okay, 8 feet, okay, is going to be equal to 4 centimetres, okay, 14 feet, okay, well that's going to be equal to 7 centimetres, I'm just half on this, because what I'm going to do is how many 2s go into this, well how many 2s go into 14, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, by 7, okay, here, okay, we'll work out what this is going to be, this is obviously going to be the same there, so we're going to have 6 across that bit as well, because obviously 6 centimetres there, the bedroom, okay, well we've got 10 feet here, so that's obviously going to be, so we'll see 10 feet is going to be 5 centimetres, Okay, and then obviously what we're going to have here is six feet, but that's just going to be three centimetres, okay? And then obviously here we're going to have four centimetres as well, because it's the same length for that one there, okay? So I hope that makes sense, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw my little plan here. So what I'm going to have is, is I'm going to have, okay, um, so I'm just going to get the lines up here. So I'm going to first of all have, okay, a four centimetre line here, okay? Oh, sorry, guys. Just rub that out, okay? Um, so what I'm actually going to have, is I'm going to have a four centimetre line going across here, okay? So you can see that's four centimetres, okay? It then goes across, but when it goes down here by three centimetres, we're going to have one, two, three going down there, okay? I've then got, okay, a six centimetre, well, sorry, first of all, I've got a line going down here. So this line here goes up to there, so that's obviously going to be three centimetres as well. So that's going to go down to three centimetres as well. And then go across by six centimetres, so one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. I then go down by four, one, two, three, four. Okay. I obviously go across by six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then obviously this bit here is which is included into the five centimeters on the other side. Okay. Just do that again. Um, sorry, just undo that. Obviously, this one here, this fifth bit here is actually included in the other bit here. Okay. Um, it's just actually bad to undo this neatly. You guys like to see. So obviously this one goes down three, but then it also goes down by five. So that's why that's included. One, two, three, four, five. That's what that one's actually included. And then we actually have a line going across, but it's only going to go across by three. So that's where that extra line comes in from. It's part of this one here. Okay. Anyway, so then the bedroom goes along by four centimeters. So that's going to go one, two, three, four like that. Obviously, then the line goes up to there. Okay, like that. And then what I'm going to have 
is obviously a little bit long to the living room because obviously this goes down by seven centimeters. So one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So go down to there. Obviously, I know that my line has to go all the way to six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then obviously that line there goes one, two, three, like that. Okay. Now, the only one that is really annoying me is um, this line here. Okay. Um, I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> Everyone line is perfect. And then that one's just annoying me because it's not going there. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Okay, so you can see what I've done is I've converted these into, okay, by actually converting all of these into centimeters, then drawing it as, as it is um, to, uh, correctly. And it, but it says label each room. So I need to make sure that I actually label each room with the correct scale now I've done that. So obviously I know that this is the bedroom. I know this is the living room. This is the kitchen. This is the bathroom, okay? So you can see that I've done an accurate scale drawing when I've converted this in by using the scale of one centimeter represents two feet. So obviously this, for example, is eight feet. So obviously if two, how many times two going to eight, that's four. Okay, so it's four centimeters. So you can see one, two, three, four. So I'm using each square as a centimeter, okay? So that's three marks for actually doing that, okay? And the three marks come from actually working out that the room's correctly drawn to scale um, and then having at least two rooms correctly drawn. Or oh, then the third mark is just making sure that you have every single correct scale drawn with correct room labels as well, okay? So that's question number six, guys. Question number seven, then, is looking at a number problem. So it says, here are two groups of numbers. Here are two groups of numbers, okay, A and B. Um, one number is moved from A to B, okay? The sum of the numbers in B is now 20 more than the sum of the numbers in A. Which number is moved? So what we've got is we've got number moving from A to B, and it's now going to be more than 20 than the sum of the numbers in A. So basically, first of all, what we need to do is we need to work out. So first of all, what we need to work out is what these both add up to. So what this adds up to... And then what this adds up to, first of all, because that's going to help us be able to look at what we're moving. So again, this is a calculator paper. So what I can do is, is I can use my calculator and say 19 plus 11 plus 14 plus 32 plus 16 plus 9. That gives me an answer of 101. So this adds up to, sorry, this adds up to 101. Okay. And the next one, okay, again, if I do the same thing, 31 plus 18, plus 28, plus 12, that adds up to 89. So my answer here is 89. So this adds up to 89. So what we've got to do is my look at an overall total of the two, because remember, it is saying that the sum of the numbers in B is now 20 more than the sum of the numbers in A. So we need to look at a total number to then find the difference. So the overall total is 101 plus 89, which is equal to 190, okay? So if we now have a look and see what the difference now has to be, now it's got to be 20 more. Well, 190 take away 20 will show you what the new difference has to be. So it has to be 170. So this 20 here is the new, the new difference that we take away or the new subtraction we do because it's moving from A um, to B. So this is going in here. Now you could do and think about removing every single one and seeing what it is. So, But what you could do is now you know the difference OK, you can just divide 170 divided by two to see what that gives you. 170 divided by two is 85. So the new amount has to be A. It now has to be equal to 85. And you've got that by dividing this by eight, uh, by two because you've got two boxes. OK, and what you've got is, is 85. So that must mean that a, a has to equal to 85. But the total now adds up to 101. So how can we get down to 101 to 85? Well, if we do 101 take away 85 or 85 take away 101 will actually show you what's being taken away. So 85 take away 101 gives you minus 16. So it has been minus 16. So I'm just going to put that 16 as positive because I've done the other way around. But that must mean that minus 16 has been taken off. So 16 has been taken off to move to there. And you can see that what we've actually got is 16 there. So that 16 has been moved to there. So actually, here, if we look at group B, well, this adds up to 89, okay? But 89 plus 16, okay? Well, again, it's calculated us so 89 plus 16. Oh, sorry, guys. 89 plus 16 gives me an answer of 105. So my now is 105, okay? So that's 105. So if I now look at my difference that I've got, okay, 105 is 20 more than that. So A is equal to 85 to 105. Now, if I do 105, take away 85, Okay, 
So if I do a hundred and um, hundred and five, take away eighty five, I get twenty. So it's now twenty more than that. So I know that that is correct. That that's moved twenty more than, and the number is A. So sixteen has moved from A to B. What you could have done is put each one into there. We said that they're now I've added on. 19 to 89 and then just see what you've got by just going on from each one adding 100 adding it so the number if you move 19 to a you get 82 if you move 19 to b you get 108 so the difference is 26 um then 11 if you move to number 11 a would be 90 b would be 100 so the difference there is 10 and just keep doing every single number until you got to a difference of 20 you could do it like that okay then it says a beth sells hot dogs okay um for at market each hot dog is a sausage in a bread roll. The table shows her costs. Beth sells the hot dogs for three pound each. Um, she sells 300 hot dogs, work out her total profit. Okay, well, first of all, what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the number of hot dogs sold times by the price to see the revenue, which is how much she's actually earning for that number of hot dogs that she sells. So what we're gonna do is the number of hot dogs sold So the number of hot dogs sold times by the price of each hot dog. So that's going to be equal to how many did she sell? Well, she sold 300 hot dogs. It says that here. She sells 300 hot dogs and each is three pounds. So 300 times by three, it is a calculated pay plus. So if I put that into my calculator, I get 900 pounds. So she's earning 900 pounds for the hot dogs she sold. Now she's got to also pay for the total cost of bread rolls. OK, so the total cost of bread rolls. Well, that's going to be the number of packs. OK, looking at the number of packs that she's got. Well, how many can we get in one pack and how many did we sell? Well, that's going to be the total rolls that we've got. Divided by the rolls that you get per pack. OK, so that would tell me how many packs I need to buy because I can see how many you get in one pack. OK, divided by how many I've sold. So I've got 300 hot dogs that are being sold. And actually, how many do I get in a pack? Well, I get six divided by six because what I've got is I've got my six by saying that you get 42p per pack of six. So you get six packs each. So six per pack of six. So you get six bread rolls in each pack. So 300 divided by six is equal to 50. So I know that you need 50 packs of bread rolls. But to work out how much that's going to cost, well, the cost is going to be the 50 packs, okay, that you need to buy, but how much does it actually cost? Well, it's 42p, okay, for each one. So 42p is the cost of one pack, but you're doing 50 packs. So if you do 50 times by 42p, 50 times by 42, that gives me an answer of 2,100. So it's 2,100p. But we're going to simplify that and make it into pounds. Well, that's obviously 21 pounds, okay? So I get 21 pounds there. So then what I can do then is say, well, I've actually got 21 pounds for that. So the actual cost there is going to be, I've got that by doing 50 times by 40, which is 2,000, and then 50 times by two, which is 100. 2,000 times plus 100 is 2,100. So you could work it out like that again, so just put it into your fact there. But now we need to look at the total cost of sausages, okay? We have to look at everything. So I'm just going to write this up, this part here. So total cost of sausages, okay? Can you see I'm doing this in a very systematic way? which means I'm going in order of each one. I'm working out that I've got to buy how many they're sold. I've now looked at the amount of bread rolls, okay? So how much sausages? Well, the sausages then is going to be, the again, the number is same as this. The number of packs is equal to the totals divided by the sausages. So how many do we sell? How many sausages do we use? Well, each hot dog is a sausage and a bread roll. So you know that one sausage is in each bread roll. So you've done 300. And how many bread rolls? Uh, uh, sorry, the total rolls was 300. But how many sausages was it divided by the sausages? Well, the sausages is going to be 10 sausages, okay? Because what you're doing is, is dividing that by 10, which is equal to 30, because you divide it by sausages. And the sausages, the reason you're dividing it by 10 is because you get a per jar of 10. So to work out that, you're doing the number of packets is equal to total rolls divided by sausages. So because you get 10 in each pack, if you're buying 30 rolls, okay, well, you're going to get enough, obviously, then to put, to put it in at 300. Because what is 30 times by 10? Well, 30 times by 10, we all know that, you know, putting in the pack data is 300. So that is why it's divided by 10, because you get 10 in a pack. So how many packs do you need to do 100 sausages? Well, that's 30 packs. 
Okay, so you could have done 30 times by 250. So the cost, okay, of these are actually going to cost. So the cost of these sausages is going to be the 30. How much do they cost each? Well, they cost £2.50 per each. So 30 times by £2.50, you could put into your calculator, is £75. Or you could have done 30 times by two, okay, which is equal to £60. And then 30 times by 0 0.50 is equal to £15. Adding those two together is 75 okay? So that is one way you could do it. But now we need the total cost of everything, okay? So I'm just going to write this bit up here. So the total cost of everything. You've now worked out separately each one, the cost of bread rolls, the cost of sausages, everything like that. Now the total costs is going to be the £240 because you need other costs, okay, which is the market fee, okay? Um, it says that, you know, um, that what you've got is fee paid to the market. So we're going to do this again in a systematic order. So 240 is the fee paid to the market. So now we've said that plus the number of rolls, red rolls, well, that's £21, plus the sausages, which is 75 so plus £75, and then plus £57, which is other costs, okay? So you can see, again, I've done that in a very systematic world. I've done the fee paid to the rolls, which is there, red rolls, which is there, sausages, which is there, and then I've not missed out the other costs, even though we haven't talked about them. So 240 plus 21 plus 75 plus 57 or 7 plus 5, 12 plus the one is 13. 5 plus 7 plus 2 plus 4 is 19. No, sorry, 80 plus the one is 19. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 393. But it says work out her total profit. So don't go and write 393 as your final answer. 393 is how much it all costs. So profit is basically how much it's charged, the revenue, take away the costs that she's had to pay. Well, the revenue is actually 900 pounds because that's how much she earned by selling those hot dogs. She sold 300 hot dogs, she got three pounds for each. So her revenue that she got was 900, but she had to pay in total 393 pounds. So taking that away, what you're doing there is, is you're working out how much money she actually earns because you've got to think about it. She's earning 900 pounds, yes, that's great, but she's got to have then paid all of this. So actually her profit is how much she's actually earned after she's bought all of this. So 900 take away 393. I know there's not a lot of when I've done this, but the examiner will find it. And I can't do that. So that's an eight, that's a 10, that comes a nine, that comes a 10. 10 take away three, seven. Nine take away nine is zero. And then three take away three, uh, eight take away three, three is five. So what you're doing there is 507 pounds is you are working out in a systematic order. And it's a quite a long question of everything there. There's not like much room. And that's why it's five marks. You're working out the fees paid to the market, the bread rolls, the sausages, other costs, adding them up together. And then your profit is how much she's actually earned. She's earned 900 pounds by selling 300 hot dogs each for three pounds. That's great. She's earned 900 pounds. Then you've got to take it away from how much she's had to actually pay. So she's actually, actually paid 393 pounds. So that's where you have to take that away to actually work out profit. And then it says, um, a company sells houses. The line graph shows the number sold per week for 30 weeks. Work out the range of the number of houses sold per week. So this key thing here is range. It's, we're talking about an average here. So the range is actually the highest number. Take away the lowest number. Actually, range is not an average. Okay? Range doesn't count as an average. Range is actually a spread between each of the highest and the lowest. The so range is equal to the highest number. Take away the lowest. So what we have to do is interpret this line graph and see what the highest number is. Well, the highest one is actually five, okay? And a lot of people might go for four, okay? And think it's four takeaway. Um, the, the, the four, five takeaway, uh, sorry, yeah, four takeaway the zero, okay? A lot of people will think that's actually the one that's the biggest because it's got the longest line. But actually it's not. It's the right highest and the lowest. The highest number is five. It's not about how big number of houses per week. It's about the highest number take away the smallest number. So it's actually five take away zero, which is equal to five. So my range for that particular question is five. OK, so just make sure that you don't actually go and do six take away zero, um, two as those numbers. It's actually the number of houses sold per week. And we know that it's not that because it says, look, Work out the range of the number of houses per sold per week. So this is a question where a lot of people get wrong because actually they overthink it too much. Work out the range of the number of houses sold per week. Well, the number of houses sold per week is this far here. So that's five and that's zero. So it's five take away zero. Okay. Houses sold per week. It's not the number of weeks. It's the houses sold per week. Number nine B then says work out the median. Now median is where you put them in order and then you find the middle value. So the median is the middle value. So the middle value okay, is equal to 
um, plus one, plus one, and then divided by this. So basically what you've got is you order the values and then you find the term that you need to work out. So the median term, okay, is going to be, well, if you have a look at our graph, n plus one over two. Now, n plus one over two is the formula to work out the median. And n, okay, is your total that you add on and then you add one to it and then you divide it by two. So if we have a look at our total that we've got, it says 30 weeks. So we don't even need to count how many we're doing. It says 30 weeks. But if you were to do that, it'd be two plus that plus that plus that plus that. Okay, plus like that. So what you get is you get 30 weeks. And so now it's 30 plus one. And then you divide that by two. Now, 30 plus one is 31. Divide that by two is 15.5. So you know it has to be the 15.5 fifth term. Now, what I mean by the 15.5 term, you have to put them in order of the values. So you order the values that you've got. So how many zeros have you got? And you don't just put zero, one, two. You put how many of them you've got. So you've got two zeros. So what you would write is this might take a bit of time, but you'd write two zeros. How many ones have I got? Well, I've got four ones. So I'll write four ones. So one, two, three, four. How many twos have I got? Well, the number of twos I've got is three. So I write three twos. So one, two, three. How many threes have I got? I've got six threes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. How many fours have I got? I've got nine fours. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I've got nine fours. And then what I've got is how many fives have I got? So I've got six fives, okay? So what I've got is I've got six fives, so I can obviously do um, one, two, three, sorry, not six, five, six, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So six. So I know that the median, okay, is 15.5 term. So what I do is I look at the 15.5 term, now they're in order, so I go one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Obviously, don't write this in the arts a bit. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I already know that I've gone. To, I don't need to go any further. So it's because it's the fifteen point five term. That's between fifteen and sixteen. So between fifteen and sixteen, okay, is this part here, three and four. So because it's halfway between three and four. It means that it's actually between them because it's the 15.5 term and that's here. Well, half of those in the numbers is between three and four. What's three and four? That's 3.5. So the median is halfway, which is 3.5. I hope that makes sense, guys. What you're doing is you're finding that number and it's between them. Now, three and four. So it's halfway in between them because that's the 15th term. That's the 16th term. So 15.5 is here. Well, there's not a number there, but obviously what's half between three and four, well, that's 3.5. So the median, as your final answer, is 3.5. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Number 9C then says that the company sells three houses, okay? Um, the prices are 185000 239000 and 136000 The company earns 2% commission on each house. In total, how much commission does the company earn on these three houses? So the commission, okay, is going to be the value, the total value of the house is sold and then times by 2%. So commission, okay, I like writing these like little formulas as my own, okay, at the top so I remember them. It's value times by the multiplier. Now the multiplier and or value may seem all confusing, but actually it's the multiplier that you're times by the 2%. So the total value of houses sold each week is going to be the 185,000, okay, pounds, plus the second house, which is 239,000 per week, plus the 136,000. So these are houses that three houses are sold on each house. So that the total of that added up together, I can put that into my calculator, 185,000, 185,000, one, two, three, plus and I get an answer of five, six, 560,000. So 560 is my total. So 560,000 is my total value of houses. So the three houses here is the total value. But I earn 2% on each house. So 2% goes into this house, 2% goes into this house, and 2% goes into this house. But I don't need to do that. I don't need to make it too confusing myself. To work out the multiplier, what is 2% as a multiplier as, a, as like a decimal? Well, easy way to do that is 2% divided by 100. 2 divided by 100, looking at our place value, is 0 0.02. So my value has to be 0 0.02. If I'm doing two, 0 0.2, you're not going to get zero, you're not going to get 2%. You're going to get 20% there, actually. So then, like I said, the commission is the value times by the multiplier. So I don't need to add on 2% to this house, 2% to this house, 2% to this house, and add it all together. I can just do my total houses, which is 560,000, 
and then times it by 0.02. And the reason I can do that is, is because I've worked out the total of the houses and then times it by 0.02, we'll put a 2% onto this, which is the 2% of each house. Because what you would have done anyway, says in, in total. So you're not working out how much 2% goes onto each house. If you were working out how much 2% is on each house, you'd have to do that. But because you're working out at 0.2%, no, you're working at 2% on the houses in total, you have to do it to the total number of houses. Now, 560,000 times by 0.02. 0.02 gives me an answer of 112,000, okay? So 100, no, sorry, 11,200, okay? So 11,200 is the total commission the company has on each of these houses. Just remember that it's the total, so you can do the total houses times it by the multiply, which you can work out by doing that, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I'm now going to hand back over to Abdal for question number 10. Okay, question 10, guys. In a game, a fair spinner has five equal sections as shown. Go forward five squares, miss a turn, go forward two squares, go back one square and go forward two squares. So Chloe, so part A, so Chloe spins the spinner. Write down the probability that she gets miss a turn. Now, miss a turn appears once, okay, so once out of a total possible five equal sections, so one, two, three, four, five. So probability is the chance of it occurring divided by the total possible number of outcomes. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. So the answer is going to be one fifth or equivalent. Okay, part B, guys, the spinner lands on go back one square three times in a row. Jamal is to, uh, sorry, Jamal is next to spin. What's the probability that he gets go back um, one square? So checking back in our spinner, okay, go back one square appears once, okay? So the answer for that is going to be one out of five, okay? So there is one out of a total possible of five. Now, it says here that the spinner lands um, on go back one square three times in a row, okay? So Jamal is a spin next. So the probabilities are what I call independent. So every time it's spun, the probability isn't affected by the previous outcome. So um, if, if it landed three times in a row, actually, on the same outcome, um, the fourth time that is spun, it isn't going to change my probability outcome. So just be very careful, guys. So the, the, the probability um, is what I call is independent. So each time it's spun, it is is going to have a one in five chance of, of it landing on go back one square it doesn't matter how many times it is spun that is always going to be the probability for each time you spin it okay part c guys in one game there are 85 spins how many of these spins are expected to be go forward two squares so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do 85 multiplied by the probability so P of go forward um, two squares. Okay, so look in here, guys. So go forward two squares. Sorry, uh, I'm going to be careful on here. So let's just delete that for a moment. Okay, so going forward two squares, guys, so we can see clearly. So changing my color. So go forward two squares. So one and two, so the probability outcome is going to be two-fifths, so I'm going to multiply 85 by two-fifths, okay, so multiplying that, guys, okay, so I can work this one out, guys, 85 divided by five, well, how many fives go into eight is one uh, remainder three, how many fives go into 35 is going to be seven, okay, and then, and then I'm going to times my answer by two, so 17 times two, is 34. So it's expected to land on the go forward two squares 34 times if if 85 spins are spun. Okay, so showing this on my calculator so we can double check. So two fifths of 85 gives me an answer of 84. So that confirms my answer for question uh, for part C, guys. Okay, so that is called expectations. Right, guys, question number 11, circle the cube number. Now, cube number, so what it means is a number I multiply by itself three times. So if I have one cube, guys, so one cubed means one times one 
times one. Okay, so these, so this is what I call a cube number, which is one. Now, what I can do here is work out the cube root of each of these numbers. And if my answer is a whole number, that will tell me that, 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 that the answer is a cube number. So getting my calculator out, guys, okay, what I'm going to do is work out the cube root, actually. So it's going to be shift. It's going to be shift, and then I'm going to press the, the uh, root button. Okay, so shift, and then root. Okay, um, so the cube root of nine, guys, does it give us a whole number? Okay, so no. Okay, so, so, so it's a decimal answer, so it can't be that option. Okay, the next one, guys, the so shift, and then press that uh, root button. The cube root of 10,000, guys. Okay, gives us a decimal answer. So it can't be 10,000. The next one, guys. So the cube root of 333. Okay, so working that, guys, is again, actually, is a decimal answer. So therefore, that confirms that the cube root of 729 has to give us a whole number. And it does. Okay, so that means that um, 729 is a cube number because 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. Okay, so working this one out, okay, it's going to be um, 729, guys. So 9 times 9 times 9 is 729, okay? So that tells us that, actually, because we confirmed that the cube root of of um, 729 is equal to 9. Okay, so 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. Okay, so the answer is option 4, guys. Okay, guys, question number 12. How many minutes are in 225 seconds? Circle your answer. Well, 60 seconds is 1 minute. So 60 seconds... equals 1 minute. Okay, 1 min so for short so 225 divided by 60 is going to give me the number of minutes uh, and seconds okay um for this so working this out on my calculator okay so 225 so 225 divided by 60 okay Working this out, guys, it gives me 15 over 4, okay, which is 3.75. So, there are so, so knowing that, guys, okay, so checking our answer, okay, so, um. 0 0.75 per year is, is equivalent to three quarters. So it's 3.75, guys, on my calculator. Okay, if I press the SD button again uh, for that number, okay, it, it, it should give me or it should tell me, okay, so it's 15 over 4, okay, so converting 15 over 4, guys, into, an, to, in, into a mixed number, well, how many 4 is going to 15? It's going to be 3, and then remain the 3, okay, so the answer is going to be 3 and 3 quarters, guys, okay, because 3.75, okay, so 0 0.75 is the same as 3 quarters, okay, so it's 3 minutes, Okay, and then obviously 45 seconds because three quarters of 60 is going to be 45, guys. So that is my answer for that question. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the small square has a length X centimetres and a, square, a large square has a length 15 centimetres. So the area of the small square is one night for the area of the large square worth at the value of X. So what we've actually got here is we've actually got um, an area of one and an area of another, which is one night for them. So basically, looking at an area of a rectangle, okay, which is the... Length times by the height, okay? Length and height times by them. So if we want to work out the area of the big rectangle, that's 15 times by 15, okay? No, this square, sorry, 15 times by 15, not the rectangle. So the area of the big one, the big, um, of the large square, sorry, is equal to 15 times by 15. And that is equal to 225, okay? We, are we with that, okay? So what we've got to then do is say that a large square has length 15 centimetres times 15 centimetres. It says the area of the small square is one ninth of the area of the large square. Well, if the large square there is 225, and this is one ninth of it, so to work out the area of this one, we've got to work out one ninth of the area of the big one, okay? So one ninth, so the area of the small one, I'm just going to write area, sorry, I'll just write the area here, area, of small square, 
remember, it's told us what we have to do for that. It's one ninth of the area of the large square. We've worked out the area of the large square. This is 225. So it says to work out this small one, you've got to do one ninth of the area of that, which is 225. So you've got to do one ninth of 225. Okay, so one ninth of 225, I'm going to put into my calculator. So one ninth, oh, sorry, one ninth times by 225, sorry, is actually going to be 25. So my answer means that x, um, sorry, x squared is equal to 25. And the reason for that is because the area of the small square, okay, if I just rub this out, is going to be x times by x. So this would be x here. So x times by x would be x squared. But we want to work out the value of x. So to work out what the value of 1x is, we've worked out the total area. So that total area is 25. Now, to work out from area to the length, what you have to do is you have to do the opposite. So we're solving this equation, you have to square root x. So the square root on both sides, well, that would give me x is equal to the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5 times by 5. So we can easily do the square root of the, uh, my answer, which is 25, is 5. So my x is equal to 5. So x is equal to five, because what we've actually worked out there is one ninth of the total area. It says the large area is 15 times 15. OK, so you work out that area. So 15 times 15, which is 225. It then says that the area of the small square is one ninth. So you do one ninth of the area of the big one, which is 225. So one ninth of 225. That gives you 25. OK, but that's going to be x squared, because what you're doing is that's the total area. And to work out the, the sides from the total area, you have to do the square root, because what you would normally do is do that times by that so you do x times by x which is x squared so then to solve what one x is you do, do the square root to get to the opposite to just work out what one x is so i hope that makes sense for question number 13 guys 14 then is looking at sequences so question number 14 okay you've got a term to term rule of a sequence which is add eight and then you divide by two the first term of the sequence is minus 24 work out the next two terms so what you've got to do is work out the next two terms so what you got to do is work out the next two terms so the second term if we know the first term, well, that's going to be minus 24, add 8, and then you divide that by 2. But if we do minus 24, add 8, now, we don't need to get confused with our and start worrying because it's negative numbers, because we've got to calculate it with us in this paper. So minus 24 plus 8 actually gives me an answer of minus 16. And then minus 16 gives us an answer of minus 16. Now, minus 16 divided by 2 is just minus 8. Still, to, it's still a minus. Okay, so we know that our next term is minus 8. And then you want to work out the third term. So you don't do it from this second term or the first term. You need to then do it from the minus eight. So it's then become, become minus eight. So just put a line there to show you what, I'm, what about my third term. And then my next bit is add eight. So I do minus eight plus eight. And then I have to divide by two. We'll do this first bit first. A minus eight plus eight. That's a bit like a minus one plus one. Again, you just get to back to zero. So you just get to it. So that gives you zero. And then divide by two. Well, zero divided by two is just zero. So my next term is then going to be zero. So my next two terms are minus eight and then zero. Just remember that you do it from the minus eight after you've worked out that second term. So that's just following the sequence. It's as easy as that question number 14. Question number 14b there says the term to term rule of a different sequence is subtract one and multiply by five. So if you're then working backwards, the third term of the sequence is 120, work out the first term. So if you're working backwards, you just do the opposite. So we're going to write down what we do it though. But the thing is here, what you need to work out is you need to divide by five and then add one because you're doing the opposite. But it's really, really important that you do it in this way. You don't subtract the one first and then divide by five. No, no, add one, sorry, first and then divide by five. Make sure you do the divide five first, because what you would do is, is normally what you would do is you subtract one and then multiply by five. So the number here, you would have subtracted one and then you would have multiplied by five. So going backwards, you would then divide the five and then take away one. So don't do the, but just because it says subtract one first, don't do the add one first, okay? Make sure you do it in the other or opposite order as well, because obviously you wouldn't be doing that the other way around. So working at the second term, that's obviously going backwards. So I'm going to divide by five first of all, which is 120 divided by five. Now 120 divided by five, I can do my calculator, which is 24. And then I have to add one, which is the opposite. So that's equal to 25. My first term then, so that's obviously 25. I then need to then, okay, again, divide by five and then add one. So the first term is going to be equal to 25. I'm going to divide it by five, okay, which is equal to five. And then add one, which is equal to six. So my first term is going to be equal to six. So don't write two terms here at the end. Your first term is six. You need to then, first of all, 
work out what you need to do and then we'll get to that first time which is six and just again just going to mention don't do the add one and then divide by five make sure that you do the multiply five because if we have a look at what we've actually done is let's say we was at 25 okay and we was going to 120 we have to then subtract one which is 24 and then multiply it by five so just write it in normal order and then see what you do so you so I'll track one and times by five. Well, to get backwards, you obviously then divide by five first because that one comes first. So just make sure you do it in the correct answer, uh, uh, order Sorry for question number 14. Okay, hand it back over to Adela for question number 15. Okay. Question 15, guys. So describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. So we're going from this shape here, guys, to this shape here. Hopefully you can see that I've got a rotation. So the first mark is going to be given by stating that it is a rotation, guys. Okay, so it's a rotation, okay, if we're happy with this, of, so, so, it's, so it's turned like, um, essentially like three ways okay so it's a rotation of 270 degrees clockwise okay so so so, so this way guys is what i call clockwise okay so 270 degrees clockwise okay and then i'm gonna say okay about so about the point okay so about the point, okay, so this is turning um, on, so, so this is being rotated, guys, yeah, on a particular point. Now, in the exam, okay, um, there is normally um, a tracing paper, guys, so you, you, you'll be given tracing paper in your exam, guys, so make sure that you ask the, the invigilator or the examiner um, for that tracing paper, actually, okay, for you to work out the turning point. Now, working this out, guys, so the turning point, okay, is going to be zero, zero, so each of these points turning each of these points actually about the point zero, zero, that is going to tell me the rotation okay, that goes from A to B, okay, so, so it's a bit harder to, to, to actually explain it visually, but the idea is, is that you, you would take your tracing paper, and then trace shape A first, and then you, you would uh, test out certain coordinates until you reach this point here, so this fixed point here, guys, is, is essentially turned onto this point here, okay, this point here, guys, is essentially turned Okay, to this point here. And then lastly, this point here is turned 270 on here. Okay, so 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 these are three fixed points that are rotated about the origin, okay, about the point zero zero, okay, and it's 270 degrees clockwise, okay, or uh, 90 degrees uh, anti-clockwise about the origin. So either of those answers will be correct, guys, because technically 270 degrees clockwise is the same as going 90 degrees anti-clockwise, okay? So that is the answer for question 15, guys. So make sure that you have a tracing paper for these sort of questions when you have rotations, okay, um, particularly for, the, for these sort of questions. So make sure to ask your examiner for a tracing paper, guys, in the exam. I also just want to mention there is a clock at the, uh, in your exam as well. So you can also look at that as well, just to remind you of clockwise um, and anti-clockwise so you don't get too confused, okay? Okay, question number 16 then, okay, is about money, okay? And it says that what you've got is Amel drives, okay, um, her car for work um, and she came 40p per mile from her employer. Amel, Amel's car travels 52 miles for each gallon of petrol. She pays £5.36 per gallon for petrol. On one journey, Amel drives 260 miles. Or for this journey, how much more does she claim than she pays for petrol? So the money claimed is going to be the miles times by the money per mile. Okay, hope that makes sense. So basically, the money that she's claiming, okay, is going to be that the miles that she actually does, okay, times it by the money that she actually has to pay per mile so money per mile so in this actual instance it's going to be 260 she drives 260 miles we know that okay times by the money per mile well the money per mile okay is going to be 52 miles for each gallon of petrol okay but actually says that she drives 40, no sorry 40p per mile from her employer okay so if she's paying 40p per mile that's 0 0.40 so it's going to be 260 times by 0 0.40 if i do that in my calculator
that gives me an answer of 104 pounds. So I know that 104 pounds is how much money is claimed from her employer. Okay, so I know that that has to be 104, which is the money claim. I'm then going to do a little triangle here, okay, um, which is going to be the miles, the gallons, and the miles per um, gallon of petrol that she actually pays. So I'm going to draw a little, I'm going to, so I'm going to draw a little like triangle here to work this out. And I'm going to have miles, okay, and then gallons times by MPG, which is the miles per gallon, okay? So what we're going to have is gallons is going to be, because I want to work out how much more she gets. I'm going to, I want to work out gallons here. So gallons is going to be equal. If I cover that up, it's going to be miles times by MPG. So miles, sorry, divided by MPG. So what this is actually going to be is the miles is 260. And that's going to divide by um, 52. Okay, and I've got 52 by working out that actually I'm dividing this by 52, which is the miles per. So, so 52, okay. I know that it's 52 because she's travelled 52 miles for each gallon of petrol. So doing that in my calculator, 260 divided by 52, which is five gallons. So I know that there's five gallons done, okay? Okay, so I know that there's five gallons. Now the cost, is that how much does she pay? So the cost of this is actually, so the cost of this is actually going to be, cost is going to be equal to the gallons that she's paid, that, she's, that she needs, the gallons, times by how much the cost is so the cost per gallon so she's doing five gallons and she's times it by each one costs five pounds 36 for each gallon so five times by five pounds 36 in my calculator is going to be five times by five times five times by five pounds 36 which is, gives me an answer of 26.8, okay, which is actually going to be at zero on the end, okay, because it's money. So two, it's going to be a zero on the end because it's money. So 26.80, okay, which is the cost it's cost. Now, it says how much more does she claim than she pays for petrol? Well, that actually means is it's saying basically what is the profit? How much more does she claim than she pays for petrol? So how much is she earning? Does she claim that actually she's actually paying? So how much is she getting more extra? So basically what we're doing is she's just doing a bit of subtraction. So we call it profit and we looked at this earlier. And that's going to be equal to the money that she's actually claimed. Take away the costs. And we're going to look at the difference there to work that out. So the money she's claimed, she's claimed £104. OK. We know that she's claimed £104 because we know here that the money claimed is there is 104 Take away the cost. Now, her cost is £26.80. So all of those costs are the gallons per cost per gallon. That's how much she's paid, which is £26.80. So taking that away, you can do that in my calculator, is £77.20. So this is money. So make sure that you put it to two decimal places because it's money. So £77.20p. So I hope I've explained that okay. What I've worked out is I've worked out the money that she actually claims. And I've done that by looking at how many miles she travels. She has 52 miles. And each gallon has to cost 40p per mile. She claims that from her employer. So that part there is done. That's the number of done. She can do 52 miles for each gallon of petrol. Um, no, she's trapped. Sorry, she's traveling 260 miles. She's doing 40p per mile. So do that. That gives me 104. So she claims 104 pounds. Now, what she has to pay, she has to pay five pounds 36 per gallon for petrol. And she's doing five gallons. We worked out how many gallons of petrol she does because we've done the miles per how many per miles you can do. Because it's say basically a bit like speed, distance, and time. How much distance are you doing in a certain speed okay well this one is looking at how many miles you can do with it you know that she can do 52 miles with for each gallon of petrol so if she's doing 260 miles divide that by 52 that will tell you how many gallons you need which is five each gallon costs five pound 36 so five times by five thirty six gives you how much that costs take them away and that gives you how much money claimed to take away the cost because you are working out how much more does she claim that she paid for petrol so she's paying 104 for petrol now she's paying £26.20, she's claiming 104 So how much more is there? Well, how much more is 204 than £26.80, sorry? Well, that is £77.20 more. So there you go. It's very simple questions for four marks. You're just looking at how much more she claimed. And examiners love to try and put loads of words in to confuse you. But actually, hopefully, I've made that sense. I hope I have made sense there, guys, okay? What you're doing there is obviously just working out how much you're paying, the money claimed, and the costs, and then comparing them by taking them away. Hopefully that makes sense. So question number 17, I'm going to hand back over to Adela.
Okay, question 17, guys. Here is a map of Cuba. 1.5 centimeters represents, okay, 200 kilometers. So we are given what we call a ratio. So 1.5 equals 200 kilometers, guys. Okay, work out the actual distance from Havana to Hologuin. Okay, so I've got to work out what this distance is. So getting my, okay, so measuring this, guys. Okay, so I measured it, um, earlier so the so, so the, the distance for this guys is 4.7 centimeters so what you do is um take your ruler and obviously measure from one point to the other so i am told that that distance is 4.7 centimeters and i want to work out the actual distance well the, the distance is going to be in kilometers okay for the actual distance so 1.5 centimeters is equal to 200 kilometers guys okay so what i've got is is what uh, i've got like a ratio so i've, I've got to work out what the multiplier is okay for this one so 4.7 divided by 1.5 on my calculator so 4.7 i'll just start again there okay 4.7 divided by 1.5 Okay, press the equals button. Okay, so um, it's going to be 3.13. Okay, so I'm multiplying it by 3.13333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333
So working that out, the mean is going to be equal to the total cost, which is £83.40, divided by 12 into my calculator, £83.40 divided by 12, £83.40 divided by 12, and it give me an answer of £6.95. So each present, cost of a present is roughly around £6.95. So each present, roughly the mean cost of a present is £6.95, okay? Question number 19. Okay, you're right, guys. Question 19. A forest has 6,500 trees. The trees are beech or maple. The ratio for the number of beech to the number of maple is 1.6 to 1. Part A, what fraction of the trees are beech? Well, so we got beech here. So B for beech and then M for maple. We got 1.6 to one so the total part for the ratio so 1.6 plus one is 2.6 guys so so in total we've, we've got a possible of 2.6 parts the number of beach guys is going to be 1.6 over the total which is 2.6 now we can't express a fraction as a decimal so what i'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by 10 so i get 16 out of 26 okay which can simplify to 8 out of 13 okay so the answer is going to be 8 out of 13 so hopefully that makes sense guys so what i've done is multiply the top by 10 because i don't want a decimal as a part of my fraction and multiply the bottom by 10 so i get 16 out of 26 and then i've essentially simplified this fraction 16 divided by 2 is 8 and 26 divided by 2 is 13 so the number so the fraction of trees that are beach is 8 out of 13 guys Okay, part B. It says write the uh, number of beach to the number of maple in the form one to n. So we've got the ratio. Um, sorry, uh, I think I've actually forgot what the ratio is. Yeah, sorry, what one point six to one. It says one point six to one. So. 1.6 to 1, guys. And we want our answer in the form of 1 to n. So again, it is a ratio conversion. So 1.6 divided by something is 1. Well, anything divided by itself, guys, on our calculator is going to be 1. So 1.6 divided by 1 is 1.6, guys, okay, on our calculator. So therefore, 1 time okay sorry one divided by 1.6 so doing the same on this side on our calculator so one divided by 1.6 okay so doing this on our calculator guys so one divided by 1.6 Okay, it gives us a fraction of five eighths or 0 0.625. So n equals 0 0.625. So the answer is going to be 1 to 0 0.625. Okay, so make sure that when you express ratios, guys, that you are dividing or, or multiplying by the same amount on each side of my ratio. Okay, so that is answer to part B, guys. Right, guys, question number 20. A shape is translated by the vector 0, 4. In which direction does the shape move? Well, thinking about vectors, guys, so that is my x component and that's my y component. So it's so it's not moving on the x component, but it's moving 4 in the uh, y component. So remember that on my x and y axis, obviously y is going up and then x is going across. So moving up four okay means that the uh, i'm going to be going in the upward direction it's a positive four so it's moving four units up okay so so, so the shape moves four units up Okay, question 21, guys. The length of a table is 110 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. Uh, complete the error interval. So this so this question it looks at the upper and lower bound, guys. So when I round, okay, 110 centimetres actually to, to like the nearest number okay what i'm trying to find is so I'm, I'm trying to find the smallest number such that when i round that number or decimal up i'm going to get 110 so make sure that we remember that when it's five or more uh, i'm going to round up and then when it's less than five I i'm going to round down okay so when i round okay 109 
0.5 centimeters. When I round this decimal to the nearest whole number, okay, or nearest centimeter, that five is five or more. So it bumps up my answer. So that is correct because um, 109.5, actually, when I round that, okay, to, 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 to the nearest centimeter is going to give me 110. So that is what I call my lower bound. So that is the least, okay, so that's the sh um, shortest possible length that it could be, okay, so the least, okay, essentially, okay. And then the next one, guys, for the upper bound, okay, so the maximum value it can take is 110.5. Now, there is a, a emphasis here, guys. We can see by our inequality that, that is going to be less than that because if I round 110.5, it is going to give me 111. But the inequality says it has to be strictly less than that. So the exact value technically is 110.499999 actually, but rather th th than write that in full, it's just easier to express it as strictly less than 110.5. So the, the lower bound, okay, is, 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 is always going to have the uh, less less than or equal to sign and the upper bound is always going to have the strictly less than because like I said before it cannot equal 110.5 but it can be less than so it, so it has to be smaller than 110.5 and it has to be bigger than or equal to 109.5 so this topic is looking at knowing your rounding of numbers and rounding of decimals remember that when it's five or above I round up okay I bump up and then when it's less than five uh, I'm, I'm going to round Round down. Okay, so that is that question there, guys. Okay, question number 22 then is about pr uh, prime numbers. Okay, it says mo k is equal to n squared plus 9n plus 1. Mo says k will be Mo says k will be a prime number for all integer values of n from 1 to 9. Show that Mo is wrong. You must show that your value of k is not prime. Okay, so here, what we first of all need to know is prime number. Prime number, okay, have two factors. OK, and those two factors are one and themselves. So we need to work out that actually when using this formula here, that actually it doesn't give us a prime number. So an integer value just means a whole number. OK, basically try different values of n, OK, for one to nine. So if n is equal to one, we're going to use this formula here. So you've got k is equal to n squared plus 9n plus 1. And we're substituting in the values of 1 into, k, into n, sorry. So if n is equal to 1, that's going to be 1 squared plus 9 times by 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1 squared, which is 1, plus 9 times by 1, which is 9, plus 1, which is 11. So 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Now, 11 is actually a prime number, OK? And it's good to know your prime numbers, OK? Um, and you should know up to a few prime numbers, OK? So then if n is equal to 2, we're just going to try out again. k is equal to 2 squared plus 9 times by 2 plus 1. That gives me an answer of 23, which is prime. OK, 2 squared 4 plus 9 times by 2, which is 18, plus the 1. 18 plus 1 is 19. 19 plus 4, I need 21, 22, 23, so it's 23, which is prime. So then let's do n is equal to 3. That's 3 squared. Oh, sorry, 3 squared. So k is equal to 3 squared plus... 9 times by 3 plus 1, and that's going to be equal to 37, which is prime. Okay, so so far he's actually all right. Okay, he's correct. 9 times 3, 9, 8, 27. 3 squared is 9, and plus the 1, which is 87. n is equal to 4. k equals 4 squared plus 9 times 4 plus 1. It's equal to 53. It's prime. I'm not going to go through how we do it. You hopefully understand the idea now. I'm then going to try, I'm, I'm saying actually n is equal to 5, which is k is equal to 5 squared plus 9 times 5 plus 1, okay? And I'm actually going to say that that is 71, and that is also prime. Okay, now I'm going to do 6. n is equal to 6, so k is equal to 6 squared plus 9 times 6 plus 1, which is equal to 91. Now here, 91 is not a prime number. So actually, I've got to a question where 91 is actually not prime. This is not prime. And the reason it's not prime is because 91 is divisible by 1, 7, and 13, and 91. So Mo here is wrong because he says that all integer values from n from 1 to 9 will be prime. But actually, 6 is not. 
Okay, when you do six into this value, you get 91 and 91 is not prime. So actually this statement from one to nine is wrong because six is not prime. There could be more that are not prime. We don't need to go the further because we know already that that statement's wrong because it says from one to nine, we've done six and that is included in one to nine and that doesn't work. So you don't need to try any more because actually you've got to a number where it shows it's wrong. It must show you're wrong. You showed that the value of K is not prime, but when you get K is 91 and that is not a prime number because it can be divisible by one, seven, thirty, nine, one, that means Mo is wrong, okay? Question number 23, then. Okay, question 23, guys. At a cafe, two teas and one coffee cost £3.40. One tea and four coffee cost £7.30. Work out the cost of one tea and one coffee. Now, what I can do in this question, guys, is I, is I can form a pair of simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to call small t equal to t. So 2t plus 1c is equal to £3.40, okay, so 3.4. And that 1t, okay, plus 4 coffees is equal to £7.30. So hopefully that makes sense so far, guys. Okay, so the small letter for t is for the word t, and then the small c is for coffee, guys. Okay, now I've got a pair of simultaneous equations, and what I can do is label this equation one and this equation two, and what I'm going to do is multiply equation two by two. And the reason for that is it is going to become clear in a moment, okay, when, when we look at our algebra. So the first equation stays the same, okay, the second equation is going to be multiplied by two. So multiplying everything by two, t times two is two t, four c times two is going to be plus eight c, and then I'm now going to work out 7.30 multiplied by, so 7.30, oops, start again, sorry, 7.30 multiply that by two guys gives me an answer of 14 pound 60 or 14.6 so 14.6 guys okay what i'm going to do is label this still as equation one and i'm going to label this as equation three now so equation three is this new equation here so i'm going to label that is equation three when I multiply everything by two. I'm now going to look here, guys. I can now do equation three subtract equation one. And the reason for that is because the sign in front of the two T, so it's both the same numbers and the sign is both positive. So, so I can do this equation, sorry, this equation, take away this equation, okay? So two T take away two T is going to be zero. Eight C subtract one C, remember? So remember, I've got a one C here is going to be seven C. Okay. And then 14 pounds 60 subtract. Um, that is going to be, I believe, uh, 11 pound 20. So that's going to be 11 pound 20 guys. Okay. So zero take away zero, zero, six take away four is two, four take away three is one. And then one take away one at zero is going to be one. So checking out on our calculator guys. Okay. Um, we are going to get the answer of £11.20. Right, okay, brilliant. Right, I'm now going to divide both sides by 7, because 7C means 7 times C. So dividing that by 7 on my calculator, okay, I'm going to get so the, the, the division symbol. Okay, so press divide, and then 7, and then press equals. Okay, and then that answer is going to give us um, 8 fifths, which is one pound sixty okay so the price for one coffee is going to be one pound sixty guys okay so here i can put that the price here is one pound sixty i can now work up the value for my t's okay so i can substitute in the price for coffee into either equation okay so subbing it into equation one guys i'm going to have two t plus one pound sixty is equal to £3.40. So subbing that into equation one, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to subtract £1.60 on both sides. Okay, so doing this on our calculator, guys, 3.4 take away um, 1.6. 3.4 take away, oops, sorry, sorry, 3.4 
take away 1.6, guys. Okay, equals is going to give us an answer of 1.8. Oops, sorry. 1.8. So two t's is equal to 1 pound 80, dividing both sides by 2 on my calculator. So dividing both sides by 2. Okay, I'm going to get the t. So dividing that by 2 and then press equals. Oops, sorry. 1.80 divided by two gives me an answer of nine tenths or 0 0.9. Okay, so that is gonna be my value. So the price of a coffee, guys, is gonna be 0 0.9 or 90 pence. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna put it as pence actually, just to make it clear. So the teas cost 90 pence and the coffee cost one pound 60, guys. Okay, and that's how to solve um, simultaneous equations, guys, and forming that equation. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, question number 24, then, is looking at a time series graph, and it says a musical festival has taken place, okay, um, each year from 2011. And it says that the table shows the number of people, okay, who attend each year. You've got the year, 2011, all the way to 2018, and then the, fe and then the number of people that attend each year. The festival organisers are drawing a time series graph, which shows you the time versus the number of people like, over, a, over a period of time, and a graph to represent the data. Now, the first four years have been plotted for you, okay? And it says, for the question A is complete the graph. So for question A, what we need to do is we need to complete the graph. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to plot my points here. So I've got up to the first four years. So that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. 2015 is 2023. So for 2015, we need to go to 2023. Now, 2023, okay, well, the number of people... If we've got 2,000 here, we need to work out the number for 2023. So using this, okay, as a graph to show you where you get 2023, is we need to have it plotted, okay, from 2015 or 2023. So we've got 20 here, so we've got 20 back here, okay? So we need to have, okay, an answer there uh, for our line there, okay, because we get about 2023, which is about approximately there, okay, obviously it's quite hard to store here. 2016 then is 20, uh, 2612, so that's 2612, so if 2500 here, 3000 here, 2600 is going to be about there, because 2600, 2700, 2800, 2900, 3000, 2612 is going to be 2006, and then just a little bit more, 12, obviously it's quite hard to do here, Um yeah, obviously, this one here is 2023, so this one is 20, and obviously going up a little bit because you get in 2023, so it's a little bit more. So I'm just going to sort that one out. It's quite hard to do on here. So you've got 20,000, it's 2023, so it's going to be 20,000, still in that range, but it's going to be no bigger than that one. So it's about there, okay? Just to make it a little bit more accurate for you guys. And then two, three, two, five, seven for 2017, so 3257, well, 3,500 3, is there, 2,600 is there, 2,700 is there, okay? But, uh, oh, sorry. 3,000 there, I need 3,200, sorry guys, sorry. Um, 3,251, sorry guys, what am I playing at? So 3,000, okay, 3,251. Well, 3,251 for 2017, well, 3,000 there, 3,500 there, 3,100, 3,200, and it's 57, so it's about approximately three, two, so about, I'd say about there. Okay, obviously it's quite hard to do again, guys. And then 2018 is three, seven, eight, well, three fives there. Well, so that's three, six, three, seven, and then eight is going to be just three, five, three, six, so it's just going to be quite high from the 3,700, nearly 3,800, nearly. Okay, so just about there. And then what I need to do is I need to then draw a line to then complete the graph. So I'm drawing my line. Okay, I'm going to draw a line continuing on like that. Okay, so I get this line that goes up like that. Okay, so you can see that each time, each year, more people are getting are going to the festival. So actually, you can see that quite clearly and evidently it matches up. So you can just see that your statement, just to see, um, sorry, how what will happen? Is it right? Well, yes, it's going up. So my graph, my line is going up in a positive correlation. It then says use the graph to estimate the number of people who attend the festival in 2019. Okay, so if we know how it's going up here, well, 2018 is there, so 2019 would actually be here. So if we class this as 2019. We can use the graph and go along. So we can go up to where the graph meets it. So we can go, I'm just going to switch my color, uh, my color just for this. So I'm going to go from 2019, I'm going to go up all the way to this line here. And I'm actually going to draw a line going across here just to see where it matches. So I'll go from where it goes and approximately going across, going across, going across. If it's quite nice to be into there. 
So I'm just working out what that value is. Well, that's 4,000 here, okay? So let me just, sorry, just let me just go back to my pen. 4,000 here, that's 4,100 there, 4,200 there, 4,300 there. And, but then it's not, so sorry, I'll just show you that. 4,000, so let me just try and zoom in, guys, for you. 4,000, okay, oh, that's obviously gone wrong because my where it is, so, so let me just zoom out, sorry, guys. So obviously it's there, 4,100 there, 4,200 there. Now, 4,300, one, two, three. So that's that line there, but actually it's in between that. So that's roughly about 4,350. So if I go up to my graph and go across, it's actually coming from here. So it'd just be a little bit higher. So it actually it's about 4,350, roughly around that. Okay. Or maybe about 4,300. Okay. So 4,300. Okay. I would say, or 4,350. So I'm just going to write 4,300 because it looks closer to that on my graph. But on the mark scheme, okay, it, it does say anything from 4,300 to 4,000. 500 i'm pretty sure so i'll have to have a look and i'll put it up somewhere on the screen now for you to have a look at but roughly what you need to do is use your graph and obviously i think there's an there would be any indication that obviously 4200 to 4500 is okay okay so just have a look at the mark scheme for you guys just to see what um you're allowed like obviously you are allowed some different things it's just dependent on what your graph is okay okay question number 25 then um is about compound interest and it says Doug owns an amount of six thousand pounds. No, six hundred pounds. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Six hundred pounds. He wants to pay back this amount in five months. He wants. He says each month he'll pay back twenty percent of the amount of low. Show working to check if his method is correct. Well, first of all, he's saying that he's going to pay back twenty percent of the amount of low. So we first of all need to work out how much um, twenty percent is going to be. So hundred percent. So he's going to be my six hundred. So if he's taking away twenty percent each time. That leaves me with 80%, okay? So after paying 20%, the debt will be 80% of what it was. So after paying, after paying 20% each month, what the debt will then be, the debt will then be 80%, because remember, we always start with 100% with percentages, will be 80% left of what it was. So each time it will go down by 8%. So we need to turn 80% into a multiplier. And to turn it into a multiplier, like we did earlier on, we need to divide it by 100. Now, 80 divided by 100, we can easily do it in our head as a pace value, that becomes 0 0.8. So remember, 0 0.8 is 80%. If it was 0 0.08, that'd be 8%. So just make sure you're okay there. So then with compound interest, our formula is the amount. So our formula for compound interest is the amount, okay, times by the multiplier that we have, and then to the power of the number of years that you're going to be paying that for. So the amount is 600. And if he pays it by 0 0.8, he's going to pay 80% each time. And he's doing that for, uh, um, he's going to be doing that for five months. So times by five. But this is the years, okay? So it, after five months, okay, he still has to pay the amount, okay? So let's have a look. So if we do that, obviously I know that says years, but you can do it in five months, okay, as well. So you can still do it like that as well. So 600, because you've got a multiplier there, 0 0.8 times by five, okay? So I know it says, I've said year, but you can use that because you've got the right multiplier. Is 196.608. Or I'm going to round that up to 196.61. So he still has to pay 196.61 to pay, so it, which is not zero pounds. So he would not pay back, um, he would not be able to pay this back in five months. So after five months, he's now got, he ha still has, 196.51 pounds left to pay. So this statement is wrong. Anything to back up that will get you your marks, okay? Having a look at compound interest, okay? Making sure that you do 600 times by 0 0.8 to the power of obviously five, okay? Getting your marks of 196 or 197, okay? Obviously we've rounded those nicely, okay? And then saying actually this isn't enough and it's incorrect. So 196.61 is still owed. So he can't actually pay this back in five months, okay? And um, so he, he said he wants to pay this back amount in five months. I'll pay 20% of the amount that's low. Just check if his method is correct. And obviously it's not, okay? Question number 26. Okay, question 26, guys. So here is a quadratic graph. Circle the x coordinate of the turning point on the graph. Now, the turning point is, is where the graph essentially changes its shape. So we can see here that it's changing its shape around this point here. And the x coordinate is going to be one. So my answer is going to be option three for 
the um, for the turning point. Okay, so the turning point is the point at which it changes um, on the graph. Okay. Okay, question number 27 then is about um, compound shapes again, looking at uh, being able to work out the area. So it says a motor racing circuit consists of two parallel straight sections, each of length 0.75 km, a semicircle of um, diameter 0.9 um, km, three equal smaller semicircles. The length of a motor race must be greater than 305 kilometers. What is the lowest number of full laps needed at this circuit? You must show your working. Okay, so what we're going to work out is we're going to work out our semicircles first of all, okay? So here, obviously, this whole section here is 0 0.9. So this bit here has got to be 0 0.9, but actually we've got it into two smaller semicircles. We've got a semicircle diameter 0 0.9, but obviously this is going to be half here. So that's actually going to be 0 0.3, and that's also going to be 0 0.3 as well. So that's also going to be 0 0.3 as well. So what you need to do is, because it's a semicircle, you need to work out the area of those two circles. So the area of the semicircle, the area of the semicircle is going to be the distance here, which is 0 0.3 km. And that's going to be half, because it's a semicircle, so I need to do half, of a, 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 a working out, sorry, um, my, actual, um, my actual area of that circle. So we're, what we're doing is we're working out the perimeter of that. So we're working out pi times by the diameter, because we're working out the area of it which is this part here, the circumference, okay, we call it. So half of pi times by d is going to be half times by pi times by 0 0.3, okay? And doing that in our calculator, we get 1 over 2 times by pi times by 0 0.3, which gives me an answer of 0 0.47, oh, sorry, sorry. What you don't want to do, you want to do half times pi, first of all, and then do it times by 0 0.3. And that gives you about 0 0.471. So rounding this up, okay, what you want to do is half times by pi times by 0 0.3 km. So we're getting 0 0.15 pi. If we do, uh, sorry, if we do half times by 0 0.3, we get 0 0.15 and then times it by pi. But we're going to leave it in my answer in terms of pi so far. So it's going to be 0 0.15 pi. I'm leaving my, term, my answer in terms of pi because I'm going to be doing three lots of those. So three times by 0 0.15 pi is going to be three times by 0 0.15. Well, three times by 0 0.15 is what? 0. Oh, sorry, 0 0.45. Okay, but again, leave my answer in terms of pi, 0 0.45 pi because we've got, we're times it by three because there's three lots of them. We've got one, two, uh, and obviously we've got a third one because three lots of them, so we multiply by three, okay? Because there's three semicircles, okay, with um, 0 0.3 of the diameter, okay? Because we've got three of them. There's one here as well. Just know with that one there, so it's much clearer as well, this distance here, this distance. So we'll work out the circumference there. So we've got 0 0.45 for that one. Now we need to work out the circumference of this semicircle here. And again, we can do the same formula. So that half times by pi times by d, half because it's a semicircle, but this one's going to be half times pi times by 0 0.9, okay? And that's going to give me, we know, 0 0.45 pi. So now the total perimeter, total perimeter, which is the outside circle, okay, is going to be three lots of, okay, three lots of 0 0.45 pi plus another 0 0.45 pi. And actually, you may think, how have we got the same answer for both of them? Well, that's 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 9, and that is also 9. So actually, that's why we've got the same answer. So 0 0.45 pi plus 0 0.45 pi. And then what we're going to do, do that, and then we're going to add that onto two straight lines because we've got a line here with 0 0.75 and a line here. So 2 times by 0 0.75 as well and get an answer of it. So let's have a look at doing that. So we've got three lots of, three lots of 0 0.4, sorry, 0 0.45 pi. Sorry, no, 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 sorry. We've got three times 0 0.45 pi plus 0 0.45 pi, okay? Which is going to give me an 8.4, and then I'm going to plus two times by 0 0.75, okay? Which is nine, sorry, I need to do that again. Sorry, sorry, guys, about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 0 0.45 pi, and I've got three, I've got 
three lots of those. Okay, I've got three lots of those, which is 4.2 of the four. And then I've also got another one here because I've got three lots here, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, plus another 0 0.45. Hi. It's 4.69. And then I've got to do two plus two times 0 0.75. Okay, and I get 6.1911. Um, Sorry, I've done this wrong. Sorry, guys. Sorry. So uh, what I need to do is I need to do the 0 0.45 pi. So I've got, oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I've got the 0 0.45 pi for those three there. Sorry. So I've got 0 0.45 plus 0 0.45. Okay. So I've got my total area for this, these semicircles and then that one there. Sorry about that, guys. So I've got those two. 0 0.45 pi plus 0 0.45 pi to make my pies there. And I get... 2.82 but then i need to also times that plus it to two times two lots of 0 0.75 which is 4.3274 so that's the correct one so i've got look i didn't need that three there sorry i've got two lots of 0 0.45 pi this is 0 0.45 pi and all of these added together is 0 0.45 pi the three there was to try and show you that i've got three lots of the semicircles so what i've then got is i've got zero point i've got sorry my answer came to 4.3274, and that's in km. So to find the number of um, laps, we divide the total distance by the length of each lap, okay? Because we know it has to be, so we have, we have to do that to obviously work out the total length of each distance. So we know that we've got 4.3274, and to work out the number of laps we can do, to find the length of a motor race, must be greater than that, what is the number of full laps? So work that out, we need to divide this by 305, because 305 is the greater the distance it has to be. So 305 divided by 4.3274 gives me 70.4811203. So that's roughly, I'm going to 70.48, rough that up, round that up, that's 71 laps. So we're going to be doing 71 laps and we round up because the distance needs to be greater than 305 km. And that's 70.48. So 71 laps is the number of full laps needed to work out to make it sure more than 305. So obviously we're then making sure that we round this up to do a full lap because it has to be full laps. Remember this was in caps. That has to be full. Okay, it's in bold. The examiner's trying to tell you there. It has to be there. So 71 laps rounded up. So 71 laps is the number that you have to do Okay, to then be able to do a to be able to do a motor race, okay, because it has to be full laps to do the motor race. So what I've done here is I've worked out the circle, semicircle here. I worked out the area of this circle and then times it by three because there's three lots of them. I times these two together, added them all up, divided it by 305 to see how many laps I have to do, and then that bit rounded up because the distance needs to be greater than 305. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll hand it over to Abdallah for question number 28. Uh, question 28, guys. So it's solving 8 is bigger than 3 minus a half x. So what I'm going to do, guys, first of all, is I'm going to add a half x to both sides. Okay, So I'm trying to work out x on its own. So I'm going to add a half x to both sides. So I'm going to have 8 plus a half x okay, is greater than three, okay, so solving an inequality is the same way as solving an equation, but you keep the sign um, the same, I'm now going to subtract eight on both sides, okay, so I'm going to get a half x is greater than um, negative five, three subtract eight is negative five, okay, a half x means a half times x, so the opposite of times it by a half is to divide by two, essentially, which is, sorry, um, divide by a half, sorry, which is the same as multiplying by two. So multiply both sides by two. I'm going to get X is greater than negative 10. So my solution is X is greater than negative 10, guys. Right, guys, question 29, actually, hey. so uh, this last question for today's lesson. So use trigonometry to work out the size of angle X. Okay, so I've got angle X here, guys, and, and I've got two lengths. So it's, it's a right angle triangle. So I've got to use something called soccer toe. Okay, so this is one way of remembering this question, guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, I'm going to label my sides first. Okay, so I've got an adjacent there. Okay, so that is my adjacent. That's my opposite, okay, which is opposite the angle, and the longest side is called the hypotenuse. Okay, so I am given information about A and H. Now, looking at what I call my formula triangles, so Sokotoa stands for, so 
sine of my angle is opposite divided by the hypotenuse, cosine of my angle is op um, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent or tan of my angle is opposite over adjacent. So therefore, um, adjacent and, and hypotenuse means that I'm going to be using the cosine. So cosine of my angle, so cos x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos x, guys, is equal to 9 divided by 10. Okay, so cos of my angle is 9 over 10. Okay, therefore, okay, to work out cos, guys, uh, I've got to do the inverse trig. So x is going to be equal to cos inverse of 9 over 10. Okay, so putting that into my calculator, guys. Okay, so um, getting my cal calculator out, guys. So the inverse cos of 9 over 10 okay, so is going to be inverse cos of... 9 over 10, so I'm going to press shift and then I'm going to press the cos button, okay, which is going to show me the cos inverse. So shift and then cos, and then cos, and then I'm going to put 9 divided by 10, and then brackets closed, and then I'm going to press equals, and it gives me the answer of 25.84 degrees to two decimal places, guys. So my answer is 25. 0.84 degrees for my angle there. So this topic is looking at trigonometry, guys. Okay, so you using uh, this little triangle, so I'll call it soccer tour. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of my angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of my angle or tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so make sure that you remember this, guys. And um, okay, so that's how to work out the angle from a right angle triangle. So it's using do you see trigonometry okay so that is the last question of the paper i believe okay so handing uh, handing over to cameron now thank you abdallah um okay thank you guys for um that okay hopefully you've enjoyed these three papers okay they help you out with each of these three papers okay um and looking at um, the november 2018 papers okay um and look at the solutions for each of these hopefully this video has been helpful hopefully you've enjoyed it if there's any questions please comment them in the um comment section thank you ever so much for watching i'm just going to hand over back to abdallah to talk a little bit about um some last things and some of his tuition as well okay right guys so if you found this video useful guys so please drop the video a like please subscribe to the channel and please also press the bell icon um i do also offer private tuition for key stage one key stage two key stage three gcc and a level maths um, please drop me an email my email is going to be in the description below which is abzw65 at gmail.com so drop me an email and we can essentially sort out a session um rem uh, uh, remotely or face to face guys okay so i, I do offer a private tuition for um, all levels of maths and a level further maths as well okay and i hope you found this video useful and thank you very much cameron for having me on today and i found this very very useful and very helpful okay so i hope right. you guys enjoyed it as well thank so you thank abdallah you really appreciate thank it you. thank you cameron no. yeah so like abdallah said if you did enjoy the video make sure to hit the like button subscribe and i've got nothing else to say unless abdallah has anything else to say then that's it no, no I've, I've not got anything else to say, guys. So thank you so much for watching. And thank you as well, Cameron, for having me on, actually. And for no worries. Really thank you, guys. It.